All right, Coach Mike here, and welcome back to the Ask Learning Leaders Show. We are here live at the Shinju Yuan School in Pudong. Can I get a round of applause? Yeah. Woo! All right. We are here to take on any questions, debaters, students, or members of our community have, and we are here with distinguished guest, Dr. David Peterson. We are going to kick it off in just a moment with some questions live from the audience. But first, can I get a quick show of hands from all those debaters today who are in the audience? Put those hands up. All right. Now wave them around. All right, now put them down. Thank you. We have over 100 debaters today at the competition, and we are super delighted to have everybody here. Now, apparently, the audience and debaters voted today with a 60% margin of confidence that Coach Mike has to dance. Is that true? Well, if that's the case, then I'm gonna really quickly share with you all just two of my favorite dance moves. One's a little bit of the old school, one's a little bit of the new school. All right, so the old school, a move from the 80s, they call this the cabbage patch, all right? Some of you parents might remember. It goes something like this. <laughs> all right, that's the cabbage patch, yeah. You can use that at the school dance, don't worry about it. All right, and then my personal favorite, and this one's for more of the adults in the room, this is the parallel park. All right, and that's a good one for the school socials too because you can sidle over and grab that shoulder of that special someone. You know who I'm talking about. All right, so without further ado, let's kick things off with a live question from our audience. So hands up, let's see question. Uh-oh. How do you What is the hardest word you've ever had to spell while sticking foam gum in your mouth? With a stick of bubble gum in your mouth. With a stick of bubble gum in your mouth. All right. I think bubblicious. 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 Oh. All right. That's a pretty tough word to spell. All right. Next question. All right. Let's keep those questions coming. All right. Ted. We have a question next for Mr. Atlas. How can we make the world a better place? That's a good question. Wow. I love that. It's all about the impact. That's good. All right, Coach. How can we make the world a better place? It starts with spreading your voice. Okay? Defining the change you want to see and making it happen. That's what I think. All right. So speaking up, sharing your views with everyone in the world, and being confident in your delivery, which you know Mr. Chang most certainly is. I'd like to see that. All right, next question. I think we saw one in the middle, and then we have a few in the back. This is a math question. Oh, boy. What's 9 plus 10? Final answer, 19. How do we do? How do we do? <laughs> Woo! That was a close one. Any other questions here? We have some in the back, it looks like. When did you first show interest in debate? Ooh, when did you first show interest in debate? Wow. Would you like to handle this one first? Sure. When I was a sophomore in college, I showed up to my physics class one day. I was an engineering major and class was canceled and nobody was on the campus. And I realized somebody came and told me that somebody had just knocked down the World Trade Center. So I found out that the debating team on the, at, on the campus was organizing a special event to try to understand what happened and why. So I joined the debate team. And after that, I was so interested. I just kept going to the debate team. I became the president of the debate team and the rest is history. Now I'm here with you. All right. Very cool. Awesome. All right. How much would the woodchuck fit in a wood if a woodchuck is some wood? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I think this scientific answer to the question of how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood is exactly about as much as a woodchuck would if a woodchuck would chuck wood. Awesome. For 
further questions over here? Um, about today's debate, personally, are you um, on Team Space or Team Ocean? Want to take this? Sure. Personally, if we had to, if we had to make the decision, it's a really tough one. I would be on Team Space. Yeah. yeah. I would be on Team Space. And the reason why I would be on Team Space, Miss Shelley, the distinguished answer of this question is because I, from a very young age, have been fascinated by the world outside of our, of our planet. I remember seeing, I don't know, this might date myself, but there's a movie starring Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones called Men in Black. Oh. Can I get a show of hands in Men in Black? Woo! So when I saw that movie when I was really young, I saw aliens, I saw people hurtling through the air, watching movies like Star Wars, watching things like Star Trek. So from a varying age, I've always been fascinated on the galaxy far and beyond. So just personally, that gives me the drive to be more interested in space. But let's see what Coach David has to say. I think it's kind of crazy that we spend so much money exploring space when we haven't even explored 95% of our own oceans. Some of you might have heard this statistic. Among the many resources you can find in the oceans, one of the things that's most interesting to me are the millions of shipwrecks throughout history that in some places are totally preserved. Some people argue that going to space helps us to learn about ourselves or other life forms, but exploring the ocean, I think, can help us learn about our own history and unlock secrets previously unknown to the past. So, I'm Team Ocean all day. Thank you. So she'll always have my heart, no matter what. Yeah. All right. At this point, I'd like to assert my right to the Fifth Amendment privilege. All right. One more question here in the back. Soon we will have Team Cap versus Team Iron Man. So my question is to you: If you was a superhero and had superpowers, would you want to be known like Iron Man, or would you want to keep your identity secret um, like Captain America and his team wants to? I think secret is the way to go. As soon as you reveal your identity, you're so limited. They'll be coming after you to try to do experiments. So. When I typically perform my superhero work, it's under the cover of darkness. <laughs> True. Well, you know, I guess in, in that spirit, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go public, right? Because if I feel like if we can make the world a better place by sharing what we have to offer with everybody, and so if someone needs help, I want them to know that they can find it here. So I guess if I was a superhero, I'd be public and be offering help to anybody who needed it. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have today for the questions. And as we do with every episode, we're going to end with a quotation of the day. And this segment is where coaches share a quotation with you that you can use in your debates, that you can use in your daily life. And we're going to explain exactly what it means to us. So today we have special two quotations of the day. First, Coach David's going to offer one, then I'm going to offer one. And it's going to be about competing and debating with your peers. So, Coach? It's not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. All right, and what does that quotation mean to you? Some of you are going to come out of here with some losses. Some of you are going to come out of, of here with some wins. Most of you are going to come out with both. All right, but it's really about the process. You have a unique chance to learn from other people, to really develop your skills, to make some new friends. We have students from all over Shanghai. So it's important you should compete, you should win, but there are losses. It happens. So you just learn from it and get better. But uh, try to value the process. This is fun, right? Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs>
All right, and, and my quotation of the day is in the same spirit as Coach David's. It is, a true sportsman and a true leader always wins with humility and loses with dignity. And I think that really closely relates to what Coach said. It's really about how you respect yourself, how you respect your competitors, and how you behave in a mature and distinguished fashion, no matter if the check mark appears in the win or the loss column. So I think rather than thinking about it as winning and losing, we should think about it as winning and learning. And I think every single time that we aren't successful in a debate, there are always things we can take away and improve for next time. All right, so thank you so much to our audience for being part of this live episode of the Ask Learning Leader Show. If you want to ask a question, reach out to your coach, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Snapchat, send us an email at ask at learningleaders.com, and we'd love to feature your guys' question on the next episode. So thanks so much. Appreciate it.